Ladies and gentlemen, you know, from the start, I had a hard time believing Amber Geiger's alibi about walking into the wrong apartment. Many of us have been struggling with that one. It's just not believable. And her defense team look like they're going to try to ride that out and prove that she's innocent by making that mistake. Now, I remember what Bonnie told us during the interview when we interviewed her on the Cabrera Santana channel that we have. And Bunny said, that floor is clearly marked. When you come off of the elevator, there's all kinds of indicators that you're on the fourth floor. Just like the parking garage did not have a roof. So when she parked up there, she should have automatically realized she was on the wrong floor. So going down that entire hallway, she said there are all kinds of indicators, even looking at the numbers, you know you're on the fourth floor. And I believe that. I believe that. And also keep in mind the same day that Amber Geiger shot Botham John in his apartment, she filed a complaint on him that same exact day. So she knew who he was. She knew. That's why I was so annoyed when she kept calling him Bud. And it was so fake. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know. How do you argue that a grown-ass woman don't know where she lives after she gets off of work from a long shift? How many people have worked long hours and did not forget where they live? How many people have done that? I don't know any. I used to work long hours. I never forgot where I lived. Okay, I, I, I'm just not buying it. I've, I've known people that were alcoholics and drug addicts and they knew where they lived. Even they remember where they live. But Amber Geiger, who is a cop, who was trained to be aware of her surroundings, didn't know where she lived. Entered the apartment of Botham John and killed him. <laughs> you know, and I would like to hear the testimony of some of the people that live on that floor. Remember when all of this first came out. She claimed that the door was propped open. And they demonstrated that those doors cannot be propped open. They're weighted. Fireman doors. So as soon as you let go of the knob, the door just shuts automatically. And remember, they use key fobs. I used to program key fobs. I know exactly how they work. I used to program them and deprogram them. When people were terminated or we had a visitor come into the building for the day, I used to program those things. Not only could I program them, we had a big monitor and I could walk up to that monitor and tell you who was in what part of the building. Just from you swiping it, I knew who you were. I knew what part of the building you were in. I knew what floor you were on. The whole details would show up on the monitor. Okay. I mean, I could really get into telling you about that, but so 
if she would have swiped that door, it would have came up red. It turns green. You can enter the apartment. So there's no way she could take her key fob and swipe her way into a different apartment. So there are just so many things that are not adding up. Plus, the people said they heard all this commotion out in the hallway. So remember, she shot him at, I believe, 1030 at night. So a lot of people were still awake on that fourth floor. And they said it was a big commotion out in the hallway. So I'm just having a hard time believing her. I don't know how her defense team is going to pull this off, but we shall see. The trial is this coming Monday, and I'm going to try to keep track of it the best way that I can, and we'll just continue to give you updates as the trial goes along. So this came out, NBC5, Dallas-Fort Worth, September 20th, 2019. Mistake of fact, a likely defense for Amber Geiger. So this is the defense they're going to put on for her, trying to shift the burden of proof. So let's see if it works. The murder trial of former Dallas police officer Amber Geiger begins Monday, and many legal experts believe her guilt or innocent will likely be determined by the defense ability to argue mistake of fact. So uh, once that is raised <clears throat> by the defense, which will be by the defense, the burden shifts back to the state to disprove that defense beyond reasonable doubt. You know what? I believe the state should be able to um, prove that. I really do. Geiger has said from the start that she mistook John's apartment for her own and then thought John was an intruder opening fire. So as a police officer, you don't try to dialogue with the person. What are you doing in my apartment? You don't say nothing. You just open fire. Don't that seem kind of amateurish as a police officer? To get a murder conviction, prosecutors will have to prove Geiger intentionally or knowingly caused John's death. The burden will shift to a jury to some degree. When the defense when the defenses are brought up, whether those are valid based on the facts they hear, former Dallas County Prosecutor uh, Thomas Diamore. Okay, so that's what he said. The great unknown ahead of the trial surrounds what previously unknown evidence prosecutors may enter and whether or not Geiger will take the stand. I'll be surprised if she does. I don't know. I just got a feeling she won't, but I'll be surprised. But then again, you know what? Jason Van Dyke took the stand and he actually ruined himself. Uh, forensic analysis of Botham John's door and the fatal shot fired by Geiger are expected to be among the key pieces entered by prosecutors. Now, remember, she said she shot him from across the room. Okay, I don't believe her. I believe that shot was at close range. Now, remember, we never saw the toxicology report. 
We never saw the autopsy report at all for a whole year. None of that has been presented publicly. And I think there's a reason for that, ladies and gentlemen. There's something in those reports that they don't want people to see. So look like this is the legal team for Geiger's defense and the prosecution that will be putting on the case. So, but please tell me, ladies and gentlemen, do you think this defense will work? I don't know. It just seems, it, it, I can't get beyond the fact that it just seems strange that someone can't remember where they live. Just very odd. And it's not like she moved in there yesterday. So please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.